uh, my dad was a very smart man. He uh, he worked 35 years at Bud Wheel. My, my brother Larry likes to remember that my dad referred to himself as a rough carpenter who, who prided himself on being able to do a better job than the finished carpenters could. <laughs> my, my dad was awesome with a set of tools and some wood. It got him in trouble sometimes because when the boss would send the crew out on a job with direction and my dad would try to explain the, the problems they were going to encounter by doing that, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But my dad always liked to tell a story where the boss moved the guys out on a project, told them what to do, and it, it turned into a series of catastrophes just like my dad had warned. And there was a little fellow there that he called Jimmy the Greek. <laughs> And he took my dad aside and he told him, he said, you know, he said, back in Greece, the boss has to be smarter than the workers. But uh, <laughs> my dad was also a, 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 not, not so, but, but a very avid churchgoer. People remember my mother as, as saying a lot of prayers, saying a lot of rosaries. My dad was, was uh, my dad went to, as Father Mike alluded to, he went to Ascension Parish for better than 60 years. President of St. Vincent de Paul. President of the Ushers Club on the festival committee. He did a lot of work. My, my dad was the, the, the father of four, the grandfather of seven, great grandfather of 11, and a foster father of 23. Not a lot of people remember that my mom and dad were, were foster parents of 23 infants over a number of years through Catholic Social Services. And um, if I could pick one word to, to describe him the best, it's probably old school. My dad personified old school. Well, maybe that's too <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's with just a bit of trepidation I told this story, and, and I asked my brother David last night if it was all right, because it's, it's my favorite dad story. You, you, have to, you have to remember, we were not a touchy-feely, I love you family. We loved each other. <laughs> but I, I'll always remember what you know, and, and, and I guess I'm, I'm not telling many stories when I say back in back in those days, my, my brothers and I used to knock back an occasional adult beverage or two. Or nine. <laughs> but anyway, this this one day, my my brother Dave got just courageous enough to tell my dad everything he always wanted to tell him, in a good way. <laughs> I, I know, but you, you, you know what? It was it, 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 it was it was a it was a beautiful thing, and David just gushed, and he told my dad how much he loved him, and respected him, and honored him, and admired him, and my dad just listened, and my dad said, "Well, you're supposed to." <laughs> I, I remember when my dad was 85, he had a quick bypass. Bye, bye. Bypass. He was home in less than one week. And I remember they encouraged, the hospital encourages bypass patients to be up and walking to, to, to fend off infection. I remember being at the hospital two days after the surgery, and I remember the nurse saying, why don't you take your dad for a walk around the floor? And my dad jumped out of bed, and he stumbled a little bit. So the nurse said to my dad, she said, why don't you hold on to Mark? You know, for a little support as you walk. I, I promise you, you've never seen two people holding on to each other <laughs> yet standing so far apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in, in all sense, we, we lost our mother, if you remember. And, um, my dad gained a reputation as a kind of a, 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 a crusty old guy, but I, I promise you, they were the only time any of us saw him cry. <laughs> and my dad showed us how to grieve and also how to get past your grief. And he did it by doing the things that had gotten him that far. And I remember calling him a few months after mom passed. And he answered the phone. He, he was a little out of breath, you could tell. And I said to him, I, I said, are you okay? I, I said, you, you sound a little winded. He said, I put in 60 tomato plants today. <laughs> I said, 16? He said, 60. <laughs> Five rows of 12. <laughs> and I tried to tell him how he shouldn't push himself and how he shouldn't, you know, but you probably all know.
no, if you wanted to waste some breath, you just needed to try telling my dad not to do something he wanted to do. Um, in, in 08, after his 90th birthday, he wrote and sold that garden twice. We had an awesome garden this year. It was, it was amazing. And when my mom had got so sick, my dad built a handicap ramp for her to, to, to help to get her out of the house, which came in handy a second time when my dad got sick. So there's not many people that that I know, certainly, that built their own handicap ramp. <laughs> I, 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 I can't say my dad was always easy to get along with. I, I would wager any of you that, certainly any of you that worked with him, might have had a, a disagreement or perhaps even an argument. But I believe with all my soul that on, on the day he passed, that God looked into his heart and saw all the work he did and all the sacrifices he made and all the, the gifts he had given to others. And I do believe God held the gates wide open for my dad to enter heaven. Well, he's supposed to. <laughs> in, in that case, I'd better just thank everyone for coming, and please feel free to join us at, at the Twilight Paper Cave at the end of the road. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. At this time, we'd like to turn the service over to the Vietnam Veterans of America. Please step back, please.
chairman of the United States of America, the president, the members of Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 154, in the United States Army, we present to you the flag of a great nation, in which your father so honorable and proudly served. Thank you. 